Hey everyone. So what we're doing today is testing some new prototype cylinders that um, these that we're testing, maybe this is a little bit more for fun, but it, it really is trying to confirm the math on hydraulic cylinders, which actually works out uh, very well. Like it's very straightforward to say uh, a particular cylinder has this uh, bore diameter, uh, figure the surface area, times it by the pressure, and you can get the force. So, you know, when you have something like 36% more force and you apply it to the loader, in theory, you're going to get about 36% more uh, lift capacity because you're, you're really using the same geometry as the previous. Now, that is a relative term, obviously. Um, so, um, all that to say, I don't have for the one series the one and a half or one and three quarter inch bore that are coming. They'll be here in June. Um, but I do have some two inch prototypes that ended up making it here before the one and three quarter. So we're going to test those today. And like I said, it'll be a little bit of fun, but a little bit of this is really confirming that the math saying, I think these are going to be somewhere around 40 to 50%. I have to do that and confirm. Um, the math works out uh, in percentage wise to the, to the pounds that you can lift. So um, to get started here, we'll start with a pressure test. I've got this one pretty close to stock. Actually, we'll check. Tractor's already warmed up. I think I've got it at 1900 PSI, but we'll see what it's exactly at. Uh, that's a, the 1900 PSI is what I think both of my tractors were stock. And it's, from re reading things online, it seems to be pretty common setting from the factory that they set it to 1900. Um, the spec is 2000 plus or minus 150 on the latest service manual. So, um, first thing we'll do is we'll check this pressure. Like I said, the tractor's already warmed up. Go ahead and get it started. Run it up here. Let's start at 2500, roughly. sense I actually did set the uh, pressure at 2500 rpms now this tractor does have hydros plus and it does have uh, a slightly larger pump than is available today uh, but from a pressure perspective speed's not what we're going for here it's all about pressure and so um, should be no problem here so let me kind of show you my rig well let's uh yeah here we go so this is just a, a crane scale, uh, 6,000 pound capacity, 3,000 kilogram technically, so it's a little over 6,000 uh, pounds. But um, that's what we're going to be using. And I'm going to keep this setup the same. So I've got chain through my Ken's bolt-on hooks, through my new crane scale. I've got my GoPro to make sure we can capture the value. and. Um, all I'm going to do is uh, this test, I'll let the GoPro capture that, uh, and then we're going to change out these cylinders, do the test again. We're going to do it all right here. There's really no change in variables. So let me jump on here and we'll get it going. All right, I'm back. So all I've done is put the uh, loader line back on, took the pressure gauge off, took the slack out of this. You can see it's at zero pounds. So it's, it's tear, um, and I have started my GoPro. So GoPro will be the official, but we'll walk around here and see what we get. And since there, it was like 20, I think it was 2200, 21 to 2200, uh, we will 
we'll do it 2500 because it's 1900 psi and then we'll jump up the to kind of the top end of the, the spec So I think it made 900 with um, extra few hundred PSI. Now, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this yet uh, because I'm doing this in segments, but this does have a, a larger pump even than the Extreme kit. Um, just happened to be what I have on this tractor. Not really worried at all about flow, um, but that, that could contribute a little bit to the disparity in PSI between 2500 and 33,400 because that additional flow, while in theory shouldn't matter, uh, you can have a little bit of variance there with more flow. Uh, but other than that, uh, we know what the actual values are, so we can kind of tell. So we'll see what the GoPro says. But from here, I'm gonna change out those uh, lift cylinders to the two inch. I expect if that was 900 uh, at 2100, I, I would expect somewhere in the 1500 PSI range. I'll go ahead and do that math and when we come back, I'll confirm the percentage increase based on the bore size. Okay, we're back and we have new prototype cylinders on. These are two inch bore as I mentioned. Uh, the production models are going to be one and three quarter, and uh, as you can see, we've got we've got the male uh, O-ring face seal uh, three eighths fittings on both, painted uh, green, just like the factory ones. I don't know if you can see this, but the rods are black nitride, just like the factory ones. But as we're looking in here, you're if you're noticing wide two inch bore probably won't ever be an option uh, for the 1025 you can see right here we have interference and there's that is a limitation uh, that this tractor is going to have with the quick connect um, you know we've, it's it's actually bigger the the factory ones uh, since they're only one and a half inch bore they're they're just about uh, I think 1.8 and that's about how much room you have between here so um, the challenge is on this side you, your bore is bigger than your tang there and on this side there's, there's no way around it since this is the actual bore uh, the only way around it would be to uh, shorten your range of motion which on this on this two inch one you do have just you know you've lost just a little bit of range of motion uh, just by fact that it, it will not go any any shorter now I'll take you over here to my uh, 2038. This is the same same size bore, so one and a half inch bore. You can see here uh, that the overall width of this is about the same as they offer in between here, and uh, it, it almost touches that weld there. But uh, there's, if there's interference, it's very little. Same thing here. I got the same type of quick connects same limitation now on the 3e e series tractor not a quick attached loader so we've got a lot more room to work with here and that's why um, I opted to go with the production model being two inch for that tractor it's overall 
Uh, it's not technically a larger tractor, but it does have more, uh, it's got bigger tires on the back and the type of uh, user for a 3E tractor, I feel like has uh, some need to potentially at times lift things a little bit heavier. So uh, I will do this tractor here shortly, but for right now, let's focus on the one series. All right, so um, didn't change pressures, didn't do anything except change those cylinders. And um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get it set up uh, like I did before, and, uh, and then we'll do a test. All right, so set up the GoPro, started it. And full disclosure, I did t uh, take the chain off, uh, marked the link that I was using, and I cycled it up and down two or three times to make sure that the cylinders were full. And uh, now we are zeroed out, and we are ready for the first test. Let's see what we end up with. Start it up. First one at 2500. So the rear end did not come off the ground. Looked like about 1600 at, I have to remember, I think it was 2100 PSI, maybe close to 2200. Now, my personal uh, use, uh, and if you've asked me about this before, the answer is I like to run mine at 2500 PSI. And the reason for that is that the backhoe, I have the backhoe, if you don't have the backhoe, maybe you have a different opinion. But the backhoe has pressure relief valves. I think it has one for each function because you need to be able to, if you hit pressure relief, you need to be able to run a, a, a subsequent uh, function. So if you're trying to curl and you stop curling, you should be able to, to pull back or boom up at the same time, even if you're going over relief on one of those other uh, functions. So I think there are four, there may just be two. Um, but they're set at 2,500. I don't know that they're adjustable. When I looked, I did not see an adjustment on them. But um, that said, uh, 2,500 is, is what I like to run at. And that's part of the reason um, I wanted to develop the new cylinder. Here's a good shot of the Black Knight Tried. And th this one happens to be uh, a one and a quarter um, rod because it is a two inch bore. So this would be, these cylinders size-wise would be equivalent to what's on a 3R. And so with the additional flow that you have um, on the extreme capacity pump and, and potentially even more with some future pumps, uh, you know, your performance, if you, if you were to have a two inch bore would be very similar to what you see on the 3R most likely. I mean, the geometry is a little bit different, um, but as far as your, your cylinder speed it should be very similar. Um, again, we're going to go with 1.75, um, and as a part of this video, I will do some math here and, and see what we got. But if we, if we just look at, I think it was about 900 and then up to, I think it was 1600, it's a 900, uh, or, a, no, 700 pound increase. Hmm. I have, to, I have to figure out what the math is on that, but that seems to be uh, more than what what I was calculating, which I think is good, um, but I'll try to put that on the screen and, and make this make sense. Not the best videographer, uh, as you guys know, if you've been following along. So we'll see how, um, how well this video actually ends up looking 
after I've got to interject things like uh, the GoPro down there and the math that we've got to put up on the screen. So hope this was interesting. Hope you all are as excited as I am about the new cylinders. I love how they turned out. Um, these will be rebuildable, by the way. I mean, these are more similar to, to what uh, you see probably uh, in, in all of industry for cylinders of this size. Uh, the John Deere cylinders are a little bit unusual. So we'll go over here just before we go. Um, they're, they're rebuildable, of course, but they're hard to rebuild because you have, basically have to take this snap ring, move it back, take a snap ring out of there, and then pull it forward. And um, the rebuild kits, quite frankly, aren't very, um, aren't very cheap. Uh, hopefully, we'll see what we ultimately end up with. Uh, these are not going to need to be rebuilt for a long time, but uh, I will make, uh, as, as these have a chance to get some age on them, people want to rebuild them, I'll make those kits available as well. So, thanks for watching. If you have comments, questions, let me know below. And middle of June is probably the earliest we'll see the 1.75 uh, inch bore. may see them uh, middle of June, probably more like early July though. Thanks for watching.